Okay, so let's actually start. Once again, huge thanks everyone for joining and for participating in our today's webinar. My name is Orest, and today we're gonna have a topic of the backup storage and how it is delivered in ZFS solution on the market. Now, before we actually begin, let's just take a quick overview on our today's agenda. So first we're gonna discuss what constitutes a backup and why they are important. We're also going to take a look at backup best practices. Then we're going to talk about ZFS, how it can be used as a backup target and what benefits it can bring on its own or as part of the solutions. And of course, we're going to talk about some ZFS recommendations when used exactly as a backup target. So with no further hesitation, let's kick off. Now, before we move to ZFS and how it can be used, let's take a bit actually closer look at backups themselves and why we need them. So basically backup is simply means of ensuring your business continuity, even in the worst case scenarios. Basically backup, is a copy of your data that is residing separately from your primary data. Backup is what basically grants the ability to restore your data if a ransomware attack occurs or if your main production server or even side goes down for any reason. Now, it also should be noted that RAID is often mistakenly interpreted as a backup, although in no way it can be considered as a sole level of protection or a proper backup. So we all should remember that the main goal behind the RAID is to ensure the system uptime and protect against drive failures, of course, depending on the RAID level. But in no way it can fully replace a proper backup strategy. Now, similarly, backups also allow us to restore some all the data in case it is required. This, of course, depends on the backup's retention policy set by the administrator. And therefore, backups are an integral part of any IT infrastructure of any company and should be considered with maximum attention. Now, let's actually talk about the backup best practices. And when it comes to implementing backup strategy, I believe everyone here have heard about the, let's say, the golden standard and the golden rule of the three to one backups. Now, it's quite simple. The three to one simply means having three total data copies, including the primary one, on two different media. For example, primary data on SSDs and another backup copy on HDs, just as a simple example, and one of those three copies stored in a remote site. Now, this can very well be some remote facility that is used to connect remotely and perform a backup or just from time to time to offload the drives or tapes, for example, to some remote offline location that can be used in the most critical scenario when you need to restore your data. Uh, just as well, cloud storage such as AWS, Azure, B2 or Wasabi can be used as an alternative. The main here, the main thing here is to consider also the immutability of the cloud storage. And it is also fair to say, I believe, that depending on your data importance, there cannot be too many backup copies. Now, also, in addition to that, it is important to keep your backups, for example, a backup server outside of the production environment, both physically and logically, for example, outside of the production domain. And of course, not to use the domain administrator credentials since in case a ransomware hits, it will easily get access to your backup server. This also means creating and assigning separate user and password to access the backup server and the backup software. Now, if cloud 
offload is not required, it is also better to restrict internet access on the backup server. Just as well, we also should remember about enabling firewall and of course the ransomware or antivirus and anti-malware protection with any software of your choice. And of course, adding the backup software to the exclusions. Now, these might seem like just a simple advices, but in most of the cases, especially if we are talking about the ransomware attacks, these most often happen because of simple, not enough attention provided to the simple basic security and administration policies. Now, while we are settled on what backups are and the let's say backup best practices. Now let's actually consider the ZFS in all this equation. So from our previous webinars, we already know that ZFS is a very resilient file system and also a volume manager. Now it has its name and basically fame for several reasons. Now, since it uses copy and write mechanism, it protects you against BitRot if power outage occurs for some reason. Additionally, ZFS is a transactional file system, meaning updates to all objects are grouped together as a transaction group. And whenever new data is written to ZFS, it creates a checksum for that data. When the data is read, the checksum is verified. If the checksum does not match, then ZFS knows that an error has been detected and will then try to automatically correct the error from parity or mirror data in the RAID Z. Basically, ZFS guarantees your data consistency, which is extremely important for backups. But that's not the only thing. As we know, ZFS is also capable of creating snapshots. Now, snapshots themselves are read-only and actually immutable, so that once a snapshot is created, nothing can change it. Well, unless you delete the snapshot and the data set, for example. The only thing, as I mentioned, ZFS snapshots can be deleted, but again, this requires either root credentials or user with proper privileges. Moreover, ransomware would need direct access to drives, which is not the case if we present storage over our network, for example, using SMB or NFS. However, these are only snapshots, of course, and we all might agree that snapshots are not a full backup. So now, for fully immutable backup storage, VM is actually a great example which since VM11, backup and replication, offers hardened repository. So it's used with the Linux-based storage server. What effectively it does, it utilizes XFS or any other file system with the immutability flag, basically with the immutability option to protect the backup storage against the ransomware. And while we have the file system like XFS or X3 or 4 that does the immutability, ZFS can very well be combined as a lower level volume manager with, for example, XFS, XFS file system on top of ZVOLs or data sets. And a small announcement here why this might seem as a bit of the hassle in terms of manual work to do, that might be right. And that's why all of this will be built in together in the convenient and single pane of glass web management with the Starwind Sand and S that will be upcoming in the nearest time. Now let's actually consider several ZFS recommendations and call it like that, best practices when used as a backup target. Now, ZFS can make a special case when we are talking about backups. The first thing is that there are two types of writes, synchronous and asynchronous. With synchronous writes, an application requires acknowledgement. The data has been written 
to the persistent storage. The Kronos writes are, are correspondingly safer because the client system waits for the acknowledgement before it continues on. The price of this safety is often performance, especially when we are writing to slow arrays of hard drives, as by default, the ZFS intent log, or simply ZIL, is created as part of the same pool. However, backup applications usually write asynchronously, meaning there is no real need in a separate ZIL, basically separate S log, on fast storage. So you can be completely fine with an all HD setup. However, if you want to get additional safety, you can enable the sync and set it, the sync property and set it to always. And in that case, it is of course better and highly recommended to place the S log on fast storage like SSDs or NVMe outside of the main Z pool. Now, we also know that ZFS verifies checksums whenever the data is read. With basic with, with backups, this usually is not very often. So it will be a good idea to run scrub. Basically, scrub is a mechanism that allows us to verify all the data to run the checksumming. And since it's quite a system intensive process, the overall recommendation will be to run scrub around once per month. So this will be it for our ZFS utilization and recommendations when used as part of the backup infrastructure. And now we're going to have also a short question section. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know about them in the question section. And yeah, uh, we have one question. If we can address the duplication. Uh, yeah, sure. Now, the duplication, especially in ZFS, uh, is quite a specific feature, I would say. Now, the thing is that ZFS stores the duplication table in RAM. And the overall recommendation will be around one to three GB of RAM per one terabyte of data. Now, take into account that the duplication table is stored in RAM. If there is enough of it, then yes, you will not have any performance impact on your ZFS pool. However, if there will be the lack of RAM and the duplication table will be spread out, then there will be a dramatic performance decrease. Plus, the duplication consumes CPU, I would say, extensively. And that's what makes the duplication in ZFS quite specific. In fact, it might be a better idea to try the compression first. But again, for the duplication in ZFS, it will be a good idea to take into account for one to three GB of RAM per one terabyte of storage approximately. And also the question, what are the best practices for ZFS and Synology storage and Beam? Uh, unfortunately, I'd be glad to answer that, but cannot talk on the Synology side of the things. Another question, do you plan over two ZFS pools? Uh, it would be great if you could just clarify a bit, but if we're talking about ZFS, pretty much there is no restriction as to the Ah, okay, uh, there is the clarification. So do you plan to develop HA over two ZFS pools? Uh, basically, that is the intention for the upcoming Starwind Sand and NAS releases. Uh, besides of just providing the block storage and network storage or the iSCSI, NFS and SMB, we're also looking to provide the high availability and active active replication between, for example, two SAN and NAS deployments. So that will be yes. And so this will be it for our today's webinar. Uh, for anyone 
having maybe some later questions or additional questions, uh, you can also ask them in our newsletter and we will also be able to answer them. Plus, we will have the recorded version of this webinar uploaded both to our website and our YouTube channels. So you're highly encouraged to also make a discussion or ask any questions there on our platforms and we'll gladly answer them. And yeah, one more also good question before we actually end. Uh, regarding the replication you just mentioned, is both synchronous and asynchronous replication going to be possible? And is this block level or file level? Now, the current plan, in fact, is to first go with the active, active basically synchronous replication on the block level. Uh, we might be looking into also implementing asynchronous replication, but ZFS actually has the one of its own, so it might be a simple way to move forward using it. But don't want to give you any false guidelines as to the asynchronous replication. If I will have any news on that, that might be covered in our future webinars. But so far, it is it will be asynchronous, it will be synchronous, sorry, replication on the block level. And then thanks everyone for devoting your time. Huge thanks for participating in our today's webinar. Everyone had have a good rest of the day or the good day, depending on the time zone. And yes, the most important is to keep and stay safe, everyone. Thank you once again and hope to see you in our upcoming webinars. Goodbye.